Would you like to get together as a group and have a bit of a look around for some koalas? Yes! Excellent. They're literally a needle in a haystack, our, our koalas. This looks like a potential koala scat to me. So I'm just gonna crush that up, even though that's super old. Uh, that does have a slight eucalyptusy sort of smell. Koalas have been considered functionally extinct on the New South Wales central coast for more than a decade. But following the summer's fires, locals say they've been seen, having fled their fire-ravaged homes to seek refuge further east. So this is where the fires joined forces. Our worst nightmare became a reality and it started to engulf the central coast. Millions of hectares of land have been destroyed in Australia. Tens of thousands of koalas, they are saying, have been burned alive in these fires. Before the bushfires, we were very worried about the ongoing survival of koalas. Now, post bushfires, things are looking extremely uncertain for the future of koalas in New South Wales. Koala tree, koala tree. So the most recent koala sighting we got was at Cedar Brush Creek near Yarramalong and that was taken uh, last December around Christmas time. Because uh, koalas are in such a critically uh, dangerous position, we need to do everything we can to protect their habitat and that includes stopping the Wallaratu coal mine. Wallaratu is a proposed underground coal mine five kilometres outside the town of Wyong. The Wallaratu coal project is owned by Korean company Corus and plans to extract 5 million tonnes of export coal from the ground each year over a 28-year lifespan. The project was approved by the Morrison government in 2019 and construction could begin as early as next year. An ecology report from 2016 found more than 40 hectares of potential koala habitat will be cleared during construction of the mine. Previous studies found a further 2,000 hectares could be compromised if the ground above the mine starts to sink. Kate Fairman is chair of the New South Wales Koala Inquiry, an investigation looking at threats to the marsupial's survival. If the government is serious about stopping koalas becoming extinct, it has to stop their habitat being cleared. Right now, because of the fires and the impact of the fires, that means looking back at current approvals and just saying, sorry, we have to reassess everything. Wow, look at the scratches on this. Oh, whoa. Wow. We're just all looking to maybe find scratches and find a koala because we heard about the bushfires and it's endangering koalas. So if we can find one, we might be able to help them. A lot of koalas will be coming out of the bushfires into this area. So we want to make sure that we can actually give them a home that they deserve rather than destroy their land. We're only um, between seven and nine kilometres from the actual main area where the Willara 2 coal mine starts. And here we are with what looks very much like koala scratches. While Jake and his followers search for proof of koalas, others in the community say with unemployment on the rise, the town of Wyong and the wider central coast can't afford for the mine to be scrapped. The industry locally is um, slowing down um, due to obviously the mines in the area running out of resources. Uh, we definitely need to have a local mine start fresh. The on flow is the local builder who gets a house built from a fellow who's just got a job at the local mine, the local takeaway that's feeding all the guys while they're building the place. Aaron Suckling is already benefiting from the mine. His in-school apprenticeship was sponsored by Wallera 2. My dad was in Kenny and uh, he passed away when I was very young, sadly, of uh, lung cancer. I wanted to just keep it in the family, being a mechanic, and they hit me up and said, Wallera Coal want to you know, help you out and support your apprenticeship. The mine is promising to generate more than a thousand jobs during construction. 300 mine workers will have jobs once coal extraction starts. All the young kids, like my age, they'd love to get in there and have a go. It's far more important to have a mine here than to, to worry about the impact that isn't actually there. There's environmental people involved in mines that have more control over the sustainability of the mine than anyone else and that's their job is to make sure that 
what's on the surface is protected. Ultimately, it's probably going to be a plus for the koalas. I don't think a 28-year cycle long wall coal mine is going to benefit the local flora and fauna in this area, nor do I believe it will the community. I mean, if we're talking about a few hundred jobs, why doesn't council, the state government, the federal government get behind, I don't know, opening a new Bunnings or something like that? It employs a lot of different people. The Wallera 2 project declined our request for interview. The Central Coast Council has announced it'll conduct a large-scale koala survey over the coming months. Jake's hopeful its findings will be the evidence he needs to put a stop to the mine before it's too late. We're certainly not winning the fight against Willara 2. On paper, it looks like we're losing the battle, but we refuse to give up and we're going to keep drawing more and more people in the community and hopefully inspire other people around Australia to step up and, and take responsibility for the area that they're privileged enough to live in. Hey, if you enjoyed that, make sure you subscribe to The Feed's YouTube channel. And you can watch these videos here. See you next time.